16, I guess. What's that? This kid over here is only 16. I guess this is his uh, first competition. He's only been doing kettlebells for like five months. No, that's excellent. That's it. Yeah, we want to definitely, and I know Garen, when he constructed this event, you know, one of the goals he had in mind was to make sure that we had folks who, you know, it, it was going to appeal to everybody. So whether yeah. you're young, whether you're older, you know, create an event that's accessible. Well, that's how you get it grow, too. You get youth involved. And for you guys watching the live feed, you can see that, you know, we've got uh, different weights going on up there. So we got some folks snatching with the 20, others snatching the 24, the 16, and we got Garen over here with the 32. So it's uh, always good to see a guy that's uh, running the meet, promoting the meet, managing the meet, and competing in the meet. So good stuff here for Garen. And so far, what we're seeing here with the snatch is a little bit of a different strategy than the jerk. So I don't think we're going to see too many people put the bell down. I think instead what we're going to see is frequent hand switches as fatigue sets in. Looking at about a minute and a half left. to see what that kid's gonna look like a year from now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And there's football and wrestling as well. Yeah, the kettlebells are such a good combo. I mean, kettlebells in and of themselves can be something you could focus on, but for a lot of athletes, uh, kettlebell sport is never gonna be their primary focus, but the kettlebell is getting a, a phenomenal assistance tool to help them be better at whatever they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, last 30 seconds. Try to figure out what to do for this now. 
Yeah, it looks like uh, frequent hand switches. When I start competing, I really get, I well, try to count, but I can't count. I would say talk to the person and just say, let me know every time. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's over there. Yeah, the camera's up there. Okay, we're going to be starting the second flight of the snatch here coming up. So in the uh, second flight here on platform one, we're going to have Leroy Johnson. On platform two, Michael Axtell. On platform three, Janice Looney. And on platform four, Sean Gregory.
Oh, we got Garen here back of the booth, and what oh, Dana man. pretty or what uh, Garen just did was pretty much the equivalent of Dana White fighting in the UFC. <laughs> So my man here, he's running the event, he's promoting the event, coaching and, the event, and competing in the event. Yeah. Triple threat. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, it's good to see that Leroy made the cutoff for the 60 kilogram weight class. <laughs> That's one big man for sure. <laughs> so, it's like in this flight we have uh, Leroy Johnson, Mitchell Axtell, Janice Looney, and Sean Gregory over there four. So, Garen, what was your final number for the snatch? Where would you land, man? I have to go double check, but I think it was 90. 90? So my best so far was 89, so 90. You're, you know. you're going to take that. And then you still have the medley coming up, and medley, so right yeah, now yeah, it seems yeah. like for the coefficient uh, winner, it's really it's coming down between you and Lesko for the 32s. Yeah, as far as uh, overall for um, the dominant male, um, but for right now battling it out for the uh, heavyweight pro division will be Leroy. John Lesko direct and it's per event so ultimately to win your division uh, you need to win four out of the six events and then for mm -hmm. the uh, dominant male and dominant female out of the pro division it's uh, coefficiency total for the first day and then the fastest time fastest time overall for the second excellent yeah. excellent so whew, I'm hoping that uh, I did enough to I have to force John Lasco to do a thousand reps. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, no worries, because we have uh, we can always have Debbie over there do a Tanya Harding on John in the back yeah, warm-up right. area. That's right. So we're, we're planning that, and this is not streaming live. Although as Dina, as his uh, bodyguard, I don't think anybody's going to try to pull one of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dina will take you out. She's got some roadhouse level skills. Yeah. <laughs> she will take you out. <sighs> So I recovered. I was a little afraid in that my, my snatch set. Um, about rep 50, I started feeling hamstring cramps coming in both hamstrings, and that really stinks. Yeah, with sna you know, snatching and hamstring cramps, those two do definitely not go together. Yeah. Completely incongruent. <laughs> Horrible. But everybody's looking really pretty solid right now. And I tell you, the uh, some of the divisions that are very highly competitive is going to be the amateur, male and female. And I tell you, I'm really excited about the level of competition in the um, Pro-Am division for the men. They're already battling it out. Everybody's worried about everybody else's numbers, man, and it's, and it's good. But a lot of camaraderie in the back still, though, you know? Good. <laughs> I got all the guys coming up to me that I coach. Okay, what do they get? What do they get? How much do they weigh? What do they get? I'm like, man, I'm, I'm a competitor right now. I don't know. You guys gotta do your own homework. <laughs> now, at this point right now, do we have the results posted anywhere that competitors can see each other's numbers, or is at this point a little bit, you know, of a mystery to them? And maybe that's you a good know, thing. You know, I have to double check, and I have to go to the international kettlebell site. So I'll go check that in a minute. Um, they should be going up live right now, but I will confirm that after this. And uh, people out there in the internet world right now might know the answer to that already. Uh, if it if is they're up, checking the site, yeah, if yeah. it is up and you're watching the streaming live right now, um, then you should be able to click a tab where it starts showing the results. Uh, I know some people from home said that the, uh, the uh, streaming was lagging or, or uh, it stopped a couple times. So if that happens, it could be on your end, it could be on this end, it's hard to say. But just know that uh, by Monday, you'll be able to watch this whole event in its entirety on YouTube as well. Fantastic. About a minute 15 away from the end of this set. Everybody's looking very strong. You can see people are starting to pick up the reps a little bit. Forms tend to change just a little bit. Fantastic. Really strong set. Fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We we have some legitimate super heavyweights competing. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I had Leroy up here in a little while. His uh, his first pro fight in Europe is coming up. Hey, John, Amanda, what's happening? Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey great to see you. Bud. I'm a little sweaty. Got done. Hey, good to see you. How you doing? Could actually like talk to you versus email about bells. Huh? <laughs> 
Yeah, Amanda sent me a picture of a bell where the center literally just fell right out. It looked like a bullet. Well, that's, well, you know what? The form better was very awesome. They One are of excellent. our bells cracked around the side like that. Mm -hmm. And I took a picture of it, sent it to them. They just sent me a whole new bell. Yep. 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 And then I had, I, I duct taped the other one. <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> So you, tape on the bottom of it. So you MacGyvered one bell. Yeah, well, I MacGyvered one. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I'm really happy with Perform Better is those dudes, like, you could you could say, hey, you know, whatever is going on with my equipment, yeah. they just replace it. Which, which is very, very good. All right, looks like we're segueing into flight three of the snatch coming up. We've got John Lesko, Debbie Sardou, Terry Broats, and Derek Mills. So it looks like we're going to be coming up here in just a couple minutes. He came up with 30 by 6, but this is my 29. So he's right now, he's up next. I think he's got to put up over 100 to beat me, which he can definitely do it. So I did 90. He's going to put up, I think, at least 110. So we'll see. That was double jerks for snatch. Double jerks for snatch is now. So if, if he puts up a thousand reps, he's probably gonna sweep the day. So what's his goal? He's probably thinking he's twenty two. He's freaking out. He was gonna coast. And I'm like, okay, no well, more. So I gotta coast. That's eight minutes. You gotta go twenty two. You know, it's weird because they kind of have. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah. Because he could do that. He said he's done it before. Yeah, did you hear how many jerks he got? That's awesome. I know. You know what? Put him down. He had this, you know, every day was strategizing, and he only lost about 15, and then he put him down. 15, put him down. Yeah, it was about So, see, that's what really makes this all kind of intriguing and interesting to me because you know, you know, your kettlebell here is going to say maintain the rack, but it's like as soon as you kind of take that rack limitation away from like John or anybody, their numbers go up. And the, even the work snatches, capacity goes up too. So, to some degree, it's like that's the, that's the rack the will shut down your condition. You take home that bag, that means I gotta, so, what do you think so far? Do you like the form? I love that. It's really well run. It keeps going. He's a beast, though. There is no, yeah, so there's no hiccups. You know when you're going, you can plan on it. It's like when people ask about running a meet, I said the very, the, 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 probably the most important thing is starting to And then just go behind. You know, on the other stuff, you're gonna you're bound to screw something up. But as long as you get those two variables in place, this is a great picture, Debbie and John. Hey Debbie, feel free to intimidate John. <laughs> feel free to intimidate John. <laughs> Flex on him. <laughs> Flex on him. <laughs> this is what I like here. A little bit of shit talking before the yeah, set. Right. It's gonna bring out the best in everybody. Once again, we're back with uh, John Lesko on one. Um, I don't even think anyone's going to argue this point. It's the number one rated best heavyweight uh, kettlebell competitor in the U.S. at this time. Um, just coming off of a great win and um, qualifying to represent the United States in November in Russia. Um, I suspect he's going to put over 100 reps in, in five minutes pretty easily. Focus I'm hoping, I hope, I, I do wish him luck, but I hope that he falls short just one rep that I can win this event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's going to kill it. So, you know, in, in watching snatches, unlike jerks, jerks, you don't have that many variations, you know. Snatches, you'll see people do three to four different variations depending on their strengths and weaknesses. And sometimes you'll see people uh, deploy four different tactics in this, from the same individual in the same set, depending on how, the, how fatigued they are at certain things.
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the technique's going to morph as the set goes on to whether yeah. if people switch to more of a squat mechanic, right. if they stay with a pendulum hip and knee, right. if they do frequent hand switches, right. or they go and do just a straight up squat, you know, rip it up style. That's right. And I think right. that guy over there is wearing a Charlie Brown shirt, but he, I need to ask him is, later. He is, man. Need to know. He gets extra cool points for that. I want a Charlie <laughs> Brown shirt. <laughs> I do. And so you can watch right now, John is being very methodical. And he'll probably maintain this the same all the way through the five minutes. I'll be shocked if he puts the bells down at all because he's used to a 10 minute set. Um, the young man, if you look over in four right now, which is Derek Mills, he's very, very fast. Um, if I was to guess, he's probably pacing at about 20 to 22 reps per minute. Um, John is probably at about a 19 to 20 rep per minute, maybe you say? Um, I would say probably, yeah, 21 to 22. 21, 22, maybe the, man 22. On the end, young man on the end, maybe 24 then? I think so, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty fast. Yeah, so let's, you know, let's hope that... Uh, that's Derek, and you know, yeah. Derek can maintain that pace for the full five minutes. You know, that definitely qualifies him in the stud category. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Even with the Charlie Brown shirt. <clears throat> so once again, um, in this particular event, you can put the bell down. You can switch hands as many times as you like. Um, so if you're a true sprinter. Um, then you can go ahead and sprint fast, put it down, recover a little bit, and just keep doing that. You know, some people might try to do Tabata type pacing. That might work for you for five minutes. I know for me, um, my baseline is I wanted to go 60 uh, and then take a break and then go 20 and then whatever I had left, do that. Next year when I come back to this, I know that I'm going to have to do compete because so many more competitors are going to be coming out for this. I know I'm going to have to put up over 100 reps. <clears throat> All right, we're approaching yeah. two minutes left. Yep, and it looks like John's kind of switched gears, so it looks like maybe the first two minutes he was pacing himself a little bit, but it looks like this last three, uh, he's definitely going to be going closer Absolutely. to 24 to 25 reps a minute. Absolutely. World-class comparator right there, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> and John, he's one of those guys that, uh, along with Mike Sherman, he's, he, he never misses an opportunity to compete. You know, I kind of put out the invite to a lot of folks, a lot of kettlebell sports that come, come here today, and John was one of those guys that didn't even hesitate. So if you were to equate him to a fighter, he's the guy that just wants to fight. Right, he wants right to on. compete and just right loves on. the whole experience of it. And I can definitely appreciate that. That is, that is awesome stuff right there. Great sportsman as well. Like the small things you guys don't see is like in the back, you know, he's one of those guys helping people in the back. Um, if somebody has a question about technique, he's right there to help them, not being stingy with the information. A lot of great sportsmanship going on here today too. With one minute to go, that's where fatigue starts setting in. If it hasn't already, we're about one minute in. Oh, one minute to go, I'm sorry. <clears throat> People are going to grind it out at this point. Come on, Deb. Come on, Deb. Great job, everybody. You guys are looking great. Awesome, guys. Good. Looking good, Deb. Keep it up. And once again, you look at John unaffected. First rep looks just like the last rep. You know what I mean? Just steady pace, very strong, doesn't show the pain, very relaxed, very solid. We'll probably do 500 reps in the last 30 seconds. <laughs> Get ready for this. Right now, what you're seeing is about one rep, but what you don't see is 20 reps in between that. He's so fast that you don't see him. But if we slow it down, you will get all 20 reps per second. <laughs> ten, under 10 seconds to go. And like I said, he never put the kettlebells down. Boom, very strong. So I think it is said he had 104 reps. 104? Which should be, I think I should, we'll beat him in the snatches, I think, by coefficients. We'll find out shortly. That's a true competitor, though. True competitor. In five minutes. <laughs> I 
I always find that best thing with John is like that. First right, three once again, you're watching the very so. first 2013 International yeah, Kettlebell right. Games being brought to you by Creation <laughs> Supplements, <laughs> Cat's Kettlebell Algorithm <laughs> Training System, I've learned that a lot. as well as Home Medics. Uh, flight four, led the way by Matt Metzger on one, Trinisha Fuller on two, Juanita Evans on three, and Steve Stahl on four. Coming up shortly. Yeah, my hamstrings finally released, thank God. So then you have the medley coming up, and then after the medley, it's, it's going to be all day. recovery. Yeah, all so, recovery. So what's going what's to be your strategy, Garen, as far as uh, well, what are you going to do to maximize recovery between day one and day two? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, post-workout, intro workout, and pre-workout supplements, that definitely helps, you know, making sure I get a lot of um, glucosamine, um, BCAAs, uh, creatine in my system. And then on top of that, just making sure I continue to eat clean. Um, after, you know, putting out this much glycogen or glucose, uh, after a workout or day like this, is when the one time, because I pretty much run low carbs most of my time. Um, and then after something like this, I'll carb up a lot to replenish the glycogen and glucose in my body. Um, and basically that's it, you know, I've, uh, I've been training for this kind of work capacity in the course of two days. So, you know, but it all looks good on paper. You never know what's going to happen, you know, until you get up on that stage. Well, I know a lot of your fans, like, uh, they've seen you compete at nationals uh, and upcoming in worlds. You know, you're kind of known for at the chair press event. <laughs> the last minute, there's various uh, food groups that you mentioned. <laughs> and cheesy potatoes is what comes to mind. Will that be part of the post first day recovery? It is, man. I, I, it's funny. I always time my, uh, my epic uh, once every three months cheat meals with these events. So... Uh, tomorrow is going to be uh, a Cracker Barrel afterwards, and I say that because Cracker Barrel is one of those places you can get breakfast, lunch, and dinner on the same meal. I'm going to consume probably about five, 6,000 calories, make a glutton of myself, and then probably pass on top of the table. But that's what I do every three months. I'll take pictures and post them. <laughs> What's interesting is you've kind of created like a new trend. Even when I travel, because people saw that set, I've had people in both certifications and other competitions that are now mimicking that that <laughs> that behavior at the end of their set. <laughs> Have one guy going Doritos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Cheetos. Gl I'm glad I could start a revolution like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already had a lot of compliments on people saying, you know, wow, the event started on time and it's running really smooth. That there's an equal amount of time between flights. So. Uh, so far, man, people are loving this. Yeah, and you know, it's really, really good feedback. And you know, it's, it's funny, as, as much as you can prepare for something, you never know if the technical gods, the computer gods, the, the <laughs> making sure everything runs smoothly gods are all going to be on your same page with you. And so far, everything has been going uh, pretty good without a hitch. So I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, I think as any, as any um, you know, meat promoter of any type, whether it's MMA, whether it's kettlebell sport, something can always pop up. And I'm going to kind of, you know, go off into tangent land here a little bit. But when I hosted the Arnold about four years ago, I was driving down to the Arnold. I had all the bells. I had all the platforms. I had everything in this truck. And my truck broke down. Oh. Literally halfway between Fenton, Michigan and Columbus, Ohio. Oh, no. So due to a number of factors, I was able to pull it off. Everything got there on time. But... Um, yeah, running a meet, it's tough. And mad kudos to you, dude, for competing in the meet that you're also running. <laughs> yeah, and then what's even crazier is coming off of, uh, coming off of uh, competing at the World Powerlifting Competition. Uh, and, you know, I set a couple world records, or one world record, just broke it twice. But I, I will tell you this, mark my words, I will never compete in two different categories or two different types of lifting they're that different in two weeks ever again. My training <laughs> has been ridiculous. And just for those listening, can you detail what the world record was? Um, yeah, before before I broke it. Um, now, once again, this is my age, which is 40 to 44, Masters 1, um, in the 165-pound category. Prior to me, it was a 419-pound deadlift. So my very first Beautiful. lift was uh, 433. And then after that, I went 457. And then um, if it wasn't due to the stage being very slick because there were some competitors that decided to put baby powder on their legs, which baby powder is not like magnesium that we use for the <laughs> kettlebell games. It's very slick. Yes. So as I picked up 475, my, and, I, and I, I actually um, deadlift sumo style, so I'm in a wide stance, my legs started slipping away from me. 
So trying to pull back 475 pounds while you're trying to lock it out, and I'm catching a cramp in my calf. I'm trying to <laughs> as you're avoiding going As into a splits. Yeah, in splits with 475 pounds. So, so that's okay. Um, I was quite happy with what happened, and uh, this was it was actually my first competition back in a year um, competing with squats. I actually did full power, which was uh, squats, bench press, and deadlift. Last year in August, I uh, severely, severely pulled and strained and ruptured actually uh, part of my uh, sartorius muscle during competition live on TV, which was horrible. So uh, I, had, I had had some nightmares and actually came back and revisited me on my uh, my 318 pound attempt in squats. Um, I just kept having flashbacks because I don't know if you've ever experienced something like that. There's like no warning. And it literally was like somebody in the crowd just shot me. It was like a sniper shot me in my groin. And, uh, very scary stuff. So since then, I learned a lot. Um, I, I no longer sumo style when I come when it comes to squatting. I go more traditional stance now, mm -hmm. and uh, and I felt pretty strong. And the, the last, the, the funny thing was, in the last attempt, I had gotten 285 pounds uh, clean. 303 was clean. 318, I hit the depth. But what happened was that nightmare came back to me, and I accelerated out of the squat so fast, I actually almost jumped. So my heels came <laughs> off the ground. And, uh, and you can't do that in powerlifting, so. All right, so back to kettlebells. And what? Are, and, and, yeah. your, and your son, did he compete as well? Yeah, I know he's... yeah, Blake, he did. He's actually over there. He's part of uh, the creation supplement line. Um, he actually uh, set the national record. He has a world record in the um, WAPC, and now a national record in WPC and deadlift. Yeah, and he's how very, He's uh, 18 years old. He also Amazing. competes at 165, and uh, his deadlift is 505. He's a very <laughs> strong, strong kid. I can't say kid anymore, young man. <laughs> you, got, you guys have some mad genetics and work ethic <laughs> running through the family. Right on. Yeah. So, so it looks like we're about halfway into flight number four now. Uh, you see Matt here in semi-pro, highly competitive division is the pro-am or semi-pro. And uh, he's kind of showing his pain right now. He knows he has to put up an ungodly amount of numbers. Um, Trinisha in, in two, always looking cool, calm, collect, no matter what. Amazing athlete. And then we have Juanita, who's just been technically sound. Now, if you look at her right now, she's kind of deploying that squat style technique or hard style. And then we have Steven Stahl all the way in four. Very technically sound. Nice deflection. Yeah, it's really interesting seeing the contrast in techniques. So you're going to see a lot of people, like when you see that RKC background, you're going to see a little bit more of the squat mechanic. When you see people have got the kettlebell sport background, you're going to see a little bit more of that pendulum hip and knee mechanics. That's right. But one thing that I think even the kettlebell sport people are going to switch to maybe for next year is because the grip is less of an issue than in a 10-minute set and because you can put the bell down and or switch hands, the squat mechanic is going to allow for faster pacing because right. the motion is minimal. That's right. That's right. So if you have a background as an RKC style, um, this is going to be an event that might be more conducive for you for sure. Because right now we're seeing Juanita. I would guess that she's probably going close to over, definitely over a 20 rep per minute pace. Right. That's right. And doesn't look too tired. Um, we're about we're less than a minute done from this set. Wow, Steve yeah, you can is, definitely see the pain in Matt's face. Yeah, that's right. He's showing it. Yep. But if you look all the way in four, Steve is flying. He's probably at about a 24 to 25 um, rep per minute pace right now. Um, this is somebody I suspect the next time we come around 2014 will be in the, in the, the Pro-Am division for sure. Absolutely. Look, I mean, look how fast he's going. Excellent. Yeah, very fast mechanics. And you can tell he's been doing this a while. Yeah, absolutely. 10 seconds to go, here we go! Fantastic set. The competition has been fantastic. Well, not only is the competition fantastic, but the level of camaraderie that I'm seeing out here yeah. and in the warm-up room, love seeing that. Yeah, second to none. No I mean, egos, no right. positioning, no machismo. Yeah, you know, and, and I must say, I mean, for, for the kettlebell industry in its whole, it, it's pretty much like that, you know? 
some just some fan, fantastic people, a lot of phenomenal friendships forged. So speaking of which, Ken, I mean, you know, being an owner of the IKFF, man, what you got coming up? Um, well, what we have coming up is, uh, I know Steve has been super busy. He's been over there teaching in uh, Argentina, and he's going to be, I believe, going to be in Norway coming up this weekend. So. I want his job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Steve is kind of like you. Steve is the owner. He's the founder of the IKFF, but he he never he never really steps out of that teaching role. So he's right. definitely not a guy who's just sitting back. Uh, Steve probably has more frequent flyer miles than anybody in the in the universe. Yeah, that's right. The universe. Aliens included. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, for me, what I got coming up is I have a course in Colorado uh, in October. Um, a course in Troy, New York, toward the tail end of September. And then uh, Houston, Texas, we have one mid-October. And then Hoboken, New Jersey, uh, beginning part of November. And then we have, uh, of course, our Worlds on November 16th and 17th. So usually this time of year for me is, yeah, I'm on a, I'm on a plane quite a bit too. Man, you know what's pretty cool? I noticed you guys changed the November event from normally called National to Worlds. What sparked that? Really what sparked it is um, it's, it's something that's actually been kind of a long time coming. When we first started Nationals, it truly was Nationals. Um, to where we had, you know, a strong presence from different parts of the country. Yeah. But now what we saw last year and even the year before is we've got competitors from Norway and Russia and England, you know, Puerto Rico, Argentina. We have competitors from all over the world. And so now we thought it was it was applicable to have a name change because it truly reflects the international presence we're going to see. Absolutely. And I'm looking forward to actually that event as well. You know, it's funny, like no downtime. I had a friend of mine go, man, Gary, next time you have a little bit of lull in your, your schedule, I want to come over and train with you. I had to inform him I have no lulls. There's no lulls. <laughs> there is no lulls. It's just changing gears. So, yeah, right after this, I'll probably shut down from kettlebell specific stuff just for about a week and then it's time for me to start getting ready for worlds which I'm really really excited about that not sure what I'm going to compete in man I might even step out of my, my comfort zone and try uh, try a long cycle five minutes this time definitely do chair press because I love that event um, but one of the things that's always been slightly out of my grasp is uh, you know achieving master sport in the biathlon um, in five minute sets and once again Ken I got to thank you for the world out there that he, a lot, he brought in a five minute division Maybe just for me. <laughs> but anyway, so that's been one of my goals is try to get a MS in, um, in uh, the biathlon. I actually achieved that last year in snatch only. Um, but and I just missed the biathlon by about four reps. So it's been quite elusive for me. Um, jerks is definitely not my strong points. Um, you know, I know that's something I got to pick up, but I'm looking forward to that event. So I'm not sure what I'm going to compete in. I just know that I'm going to compete in. We're going to have a strong Team F3 contingency there as well. I've got probably about 17 kettlebell competitors now, and it's just getting bigger and growing. I just have a gym full of talent, man, so we're always going to support the ICAF for sure. Um, so in regards to the event information about, like, the workshops and CKT, stuff like that, where can people go to check that out? Uh, just go to IKFF.net and then go to our events page, and you will see uh, certifications. Yeah, and I tell you, man, you know, we got a nice little following here, but this the event like this, we're really small in comparison to when you show up at the Worlds. You're going to see 200-plus athletes um, from all over the world. It's phenomenal. And is it still going to be held at the Novi, Sher Novi Hilton Sheridan? Sheridan. Uh, Novi Sheridan. No, yep. Novi Sheridan. Yep, we've always had really good luck with them. I've been working with them now for the last three years. Uh, they have a phenomenal venue. It's a great location. There's restaurants. It's close to the airport. Uh, the staff is, you know, really friendly and easy to work with, and people really seem to like the venue. So, you know, we're going to stick with it, and, uh, you know, I think But what we're going to see over the next couple years is we're going to have bigger competitions like that in different parts of the world as well. Yeah. So, you know, we're seeing, we have our European Open coming up in Norway. Uh, we have our Pacific Northwest Championships coming up in Seattle. Uh, so we're trying to create as many opportunities for people to compete as we can. You know, how can I be down, Ken? How can I just, you know, can I, can I just, can I be the bag boy for these Norway trips, Brazil, Brazil, Norway? Can, can, can you just can fly <laughs> me to be the bag boy? You know, I can just help. I can just help. I'll be a helper. I'll be a gopher. <laughs> I want to travel the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. You got it, man. We'll make that happen. And with your flexibility, we can get you in a suitcase. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Which is probably more comfortable than some of the seats on Delta or America. <laughs> yeah. Right on. All right, so now we are under uh, number five, uh, flight five, right here. Um, Craig Sylvester, um, the owner of Michigan Kettlebell, great guy, great, great coach, always laid back and relaxed when it comes to anything. 
Also for non-mole competitors as well. And possibly the only person we have here today who could literally go through the ceiling in the snatch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very, that's a tall man, for sure. Um, next is we have uh, Maureen, who is technically very sound. She's also an IKFF CKT, um, one of my teachers here at F3 Fitness. Very, very good. And then we have a newcomer, Beth Bomia, in three. You know, just as her first event ever. But she is quite the competitor. Man. Always staying, first one here at practice, the last one to leave, constantly working, never satisfied with anything. And uh, for somebody to pick this stuff up within you know, the course of two months, I'm very proud of her. Um, and then on four, we have Alan Ejimi. I mentioned him earlier, 58 years old. Um, two months ago, like even I said earlier, in the double jerks, he was double jerking the 44 or the 20 kilograms. Three weeks ago, he couldn't even do one rep with the 44s. So, I mean, it's been a process getting him strong. And the day he put up, like, I think 33 reps with the 44s. So I'm very, very proud of him. Um, you know, he's had some mobility limitations. But he's another guy, first one here, last one to leave. Very hard worker. Awesome. Once again, if you can tune in and hear the background, the breathing is very audible. That's very, very important. Helps keep the heart rate down, the blood pressure down, which translates into being able to pull off more reps, being able to last longer. Um, in this set, I'm not sure if anybody's gonna go for the full five without putting them down or not. Um, But I know that most of the time, the people that I practice with, they were actually putting him down. They'd either go 40 straight and then put him down, or 60 straight and put him down. Some people were going 10, 10, put him down. There you go, Craig, looking strong. Very strong, everybody, relax. That's it, just keep working. Nice, Marine. Come on, Marine, let's go. Good. So for the non-kettlebell people out there tuning in to watch this right now, what they're performing is the snatch, kettlebell snatch. Uh, the first event was the jerks. And the next up is gonna be something brand new uh, to the kettlebell world, which is going to be the medley. Um, and in the medley, people are going to be doing the long cycle, which is a traditional kettlebell event. Um, two minutes of that, followed up by uh, one minute of squats, one minute of chest press, and then one minute of deadlift down-ups. And you're going to see some amazing differences in techniques on that, because people are going to really exploit their strengths and probably take it easier on the weaknesses to save their energy for what they for the strengths because in the medley one rep is one rep it doesn't matter now if you, Garen, if you had a lot of people that are competing in this event yeah that uh are you seeing like a trend like are you seeing a lot of mma athletes doing it are you seeing a lot of first responders doing it have you kind of found that this event has kind of sparked a, a training style for a certain demographic of folks out there yeah you know it's with, I can speak for my group specifically I mean a lot of the competitors and my teammates today are our first-time lifters you know we're almost probably about 50 50 as, as far as uh, people who've been on the stage or the platform before versus people who haven't um, so because of the way we train at F3 you know pretty much uh, high work capacity all the time you know I always tell people that we train like utility knives I mean you can put us in any situation and we're gonna do okay give us a little technique training and we'll do really good mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so for this event, it's gonna cause different competitors to start training um, more like that. You know, it's, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of, of kettlebell sports. I love it, it's my heart. But I'm also a big fan of, of CrossFit too. So what we were talking about doing is kind of merging something, um, but always using kettlebells, um, but bringing all these different events. So yeah, so training for this, great job. Closing down, three seconds left. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so training for this has, um, I don't want to say it's been harder than training for a normal kettlebell sport because if you're training and training right, every time you step in the gym, it should be hard. <laughs> you know, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. The way we train, we have one gear, we just get at it. Um, it's just different because you have to, you have to, one, 
protect what your strengths are and two, really work hard to pick up your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So the training is nonstop. Um, for me, you know, I, maybe I might have a little ADD, so there's something like this I really like because I don't have to focus on one thing at a time, you know what I mean? Um, so it kind of kills my boredom a little bit. Yeah. Because, you know, when you, I mean, you're, you're a competitor, so when you're doing jerks and snatches for a long one, that's all you do when you go to competition. Man, I don't know how people can say they can't stand doing them. We still do them, and when you get on, everything works up to that set. Once you get on stage, ah, you love them, yeah, you're for the fight. But man, practicing stinks. <laughs> oh yeah, and the 10 minute time frame is something, it, it's somewhat of a hard sell to yeah. somebody like an MMA athlete. Yeah. For example, the, you know, they want to make their, uh, their, their workout duration or their conditioning duration similar to their competitive situation. And a 10 minute set, it, you know, I've even joked, you know, I've never watched all of my 10 minute sets. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, but a five minute set, you know, I think that's something we're gonna see is gonna be more athlete friendly. Yeah, for and, sure. And, you know, they're moving faster, heavier, uh, versus the 10 minute sets do, you know, tend to, you know, in, implement a sense of pacing, which is good. But I like the five minute sets. I yeah, like the five minute for sets sure. for the athletes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think, you know, ultimately for our sport to grow, it's about um, involving and attracting spectators. And I think the five-minute sprinty type stuff will be uh, something more advantageous for like for the, for the public to get into. It's a little bit faster. More reps are happening. Because um, us as a competitor, we know how hard and difficult it is. You know, when yeah. you're doing a 10 minute, so we, we really respect what's happening. If somebody can last 10 minutes with 32 kilograms, I don't care what size it is, that is very respectful. It doesn't matter even what, I'm gonna say, you can back this up. 10 minutes with any kettlebell, nonstop without putting it down, that is amazingly hard stuff. So when you get through that 10 minutes, we can appreciate that because we're competitors. But when the public turns in, especially somebody who's used to watching Honey Boo Boo, <laughs> we're not gonna have the same drama to it, you know what I mean? So we might lose people in 10 minutes, that's whereas the five, people get to see the sweat and anguish. Great job, brother. Great job, Craig. Um, and uh, you know, it's and you get to see people, you know, turn through the flights a little bit quicker. Um, so going back to your question, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, if you figure uh, Leroy Johnson, probably one of the arguably one of the top amateur um, MMA fighters in the country, who's having his first pro fight over in uh, Romania, coming up in September. Nice. Um, you know, he's been doing it and he's loving it because it's actually helped his cardio for for MMA. Mm -hmm. It's a one-to-one -one relation, you know, lifting under load, moving bells, moving weight under load, pausing under load, because um, it's the same type of thing. If somebody's laying on top of you, you're not truly resting because <laughs> you're, you're constantly <laughs> no. working to get this person off you, and you're a fighter, so you know that, Ken. So for you MMA fighters out there, this is, I mean, this is just another platform that will, will coincide with uh, your training, something else to, uh, to buffer that resume, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can smash your face in the real world, and I can also smash it in kettlebells, you know? <laughs> All right, so we got uh, Flight 6 coming up next. We got Rock Cox, coolest name on the planet. We got Sandy Franca, um, and we got Jonathan Garling. And Jonathan, I believe, he was here last night for weigh-in, but he had an emergency, and I'm not sure what happened. I just hope everything is okay and his family's okay. Um, so we're only going to have two in this flight coming up next. Um, Rock is a seasoned veteran. He's a very tough, athletic guy. Um, I suspect in 2014 he's going to move up the pro division and be one of those guys that's very, very hard to beat. He's just, he's just solid muscle. Um, Sandy, brand new. Man, I've been working on her for two years to try to get her to compete in kettlebell sport type stuff. Very shy. So I have to give kudos to her because she actually came out of her shell for this, you know. Um, and she's on stage because, you know, it's not easy when you're sitting in front of the world, you know, doing something like this, especially if, uh, you know, you kind of have that shyness, but she is a competitor. Don't, don't, no doubts about that. Well, I, I know Rock Cox, he's promised some stiff competition here in the snatch, so that's something he's uh, said quite a few times today. Yeah, I suspect he'll probably, he'll probably set the benchmark and he'll probably set the world record in the semi-pro today, because um, that's the other cool thing about this. Remember, this is the very first one, so world records will be set, um, and they can only be broken um, at an ICAF or a, um, IKG um, association event. So something true to form for this particular, but he's going to be a beast in these. Yeah, and, as the, and as we kind of see the event grow, I think we're also going to see the sponsorships for specific Absolutely. athletes grow. And it looks like both Viagra and Cialis <laughs> are interested in Rock Cox. <laughs> Based on his name alone. I want to change my name. He, that's the coolest name on the planet. I mean, I think we need to get a copy of his driver's license to yeah, make sure this, make is, sure this right. is valid. And I tell you what, man, I mean, as jacked as he is, 
with a name like that, you have to be Jack. He had no choice. Absolutely. He had no choice. <laughs> yep, probably started right back in that first grade. Yeah. Teacher does the attendance, the roll call. Cox. <laughs> Rock. <laughs> Rock Cox. And I will guarantee you, if she made fun of that, probably at that age, she got punched in the mouth. Exactly. So it looks like Rock's off to a really, Good really start. fast yeah. pace, as is uh, Sandy. Yeah. So this this event is awesome for, it doesn't matter the level, um, you know, brand new people to uh, to the seasoned veterans. So in the in the men's um, division, amateurs compete with, uh, for the most part, the 44, I'm sorry, 20 kilogram bells. Pro-Am is using the 24 kilograms, and the pros are using the 32. Um, for the ladies, we got um, uh, the 12 kilogram, and then we go to the 16, and then we got the 20 kilogram. So it looks like we're probably looking at Sandy. She's you know pacing herself a little bit more evenly, so using the hand switch to her advantage. Yeah. And I, I will say this for Sandy: she's you know she's still a, very much a work in progress, like all of us. She's very, very, very hard on herself. So when you watch her, in her head, she's going, was that a perfect rep? Was that a perfect rep? So a lot of times you're gonna see her shaking her head and getting a little frustrated in between <laughs> reps. Um, but she is quite the competitor. Like I said, if you look at Rock, Rock is all business, man. All business. Uh, I suspect he's gonna put up over 110 reps. Yep, he's got the short range of motion. He's using a really shallow pendulum. Yeah. And this is where we're going to see different body types are going to have different advantages. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He is, he is uh, very, very audible with his breathing. And that's what the pros do. You know, it's just, you know how important that breathing is, helping to keep the heart rate down. Because the last thing you want to do is when you're getting into a, an aerobic type exercise like this, is uh, start holding your breath. Now, now that makes good for YouTube video, watching you pass out. <laughs> but, but that's not good to do as an athlete. Okay, we're about uh, less than two minutes to go. They're both looking great. Completely nice different sp styles. And for a lot of people that are kind of watching now and they're kind of hearing rocks breathing, um, some people might say that's too much breathing, that's hyperventilating, but believe it or not, this is actually producing the exact opposite response for him physiologically and internally. It's keeping his heart rate down. That's right. And if he can keep his heart rate down, he can control some of his other autonomic functions and keep them down as well. That's right. That's so right. for those of you who are kind of like new to the sport and you're hearing the breathing, that's why they do it. More oxygen, more rhythmic continuous breathing, better heart rate. That's right. Now, vice versa, if you try to breathe like Rock is doing, just standing still, yeah, you're going to hyperventilate and pass out. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Or if you breathe like this socially, there's probably a PPO in your future. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we got less than one minute, and Rock is still looking Let's go, solid. Guys. Andy, the first timer, is looking fantastic. She has so much heart, so much heart. We're about 20 seconds left, and this is where all you're gonna do is give what you got. Sandy's looking at her hand like she might have ripped, um, and that is common, it happens. Start building up that heat and that friction on your hand, that bell will just grab your flesh and rip it right off. So. But a lot of that is if you look at her hand, she's actually really gripping tight, and that's what's causing that heat. Fantastic set. All right, we're gonna take a short, short break, about five minutes and we'll be back. Once again, this is the International Kettleball Games, brought to you by Creation Supplements, Cats, as well as Home Medics. Let me go introduce you to uh, oh, guys yeah. over at Creation, Absolutely. man.
Okay, guys, we have about 30 seconds here coming up before the uh, final flight of Snatch. So, platform one, we got Billy. Platform two, Brian Rose. Platform three, Nasser. And then platform four, Denise Hanna. And uh, right now I'm here with Brandon from uh, Creation Supplements. So, Brandon, tell us a little bit about uh, a little bit about your company, uh, your company's you know vision and goals, and uh, your different products that you have here today. Uh, so, Creation Supplements was started by uh, myself and uh, my freshman college roommate. We entered the business trying to find uh, by trying to find products that were. Uh, in line with my powerlifting goals and his soccer goals and there's really no pr products out there for athletes in general whether it's a soccer player a kettlebell athlete or etc most of the products right now are for bodybuilders uh, and things like that so we wanted to come up with products that were very very simple so that they could pass NCAA standards or any other testing requirements and then uh, th give you that edge that you you want in your workouts or in your competitions um, that no other product can give you. Our, our product line, uh, we're very proud. It's uh, created by athletes for athletes. So Michael and I, my partner, are very, very uh, in-depth with, with the formulation of each product. With our manufacturing plan, we're very understanding of, of our wants and needs for the products. Absolutely. Awesome. Now tell us a little bit about the products you have here today. Uh, so we brought uh, each of our products uh, to this competition, we have um, our Tunnel Vision pre-workout. Tunnel Vision is one of our most exciting products. It just came out just a couple days ago. Um, it's a it's a ultra concentrated pre-workout. It's a seven gram scoop. The part that we're most excited about this is that it has only seven active ingredients in it. If you go to GNC, most products have a, a proprietary list of 30, 40 ingredients. Tunnel Vision is, is in a class of its own with only seven. And you could go online and, and check each ingredient that's on uh, or in Tunnel Vision, and each one is, is scientifically proven. It, um, our athletes have been taking it, and, and they say it's the best uh, pre-workout they've ever had. Uh, the, the, the energy you get, the drive, that determination, that mental focus is unlike any other. We've also brought our Supernova, which is our whey protein. This one we're also very excited for because we included a full branch chain amino acid profile. Mm -hmm. um, it's five grams of branch chain amino acids per scoop. Mm -hmm. Plus it has three grams of glutamine, which is a great recovery agent. There's mm -hmm. not really many proteins that include branch chain amino acids or glutamine in it. Um, we included whey protein, which is a fast-absorbed protein, and also milk protein because milk proteins are slow absorb. Most people, when they have their their protein supplements, they don't think about a couple hours down the road when they've done their workouts. The milk protein in Supernova is going to last you a couple hours when you're driving home or when you're just resting, relaxing after you take your initial, you know, post-workout meal or post-workout shake. The milk protein in Supernova is going to help you uh, further down down the the road. Um, so that you're not depriving mm -hmm. your muscles of, extent, of essential nutrients. Awesome. And, and how long have you guys been around for? We actually became official June 6th of this year. So it's been a crazy three months for us. Um, we, we, of course, you know a lot behind the scenes, stuff like that. But we've been official since June 6th. Now, if people want to uh, order the products, where would they go? Uh, they can order all of our products online at creationsupplementsllc.com. All, the, all of our stuff is there. We also have apparel. We've got a men's and women's multivitamin for athletes, by athletes, um, as well as a, num uh, a number of other products. Uh, and we also have an all-natural pre-workout coming out uh, in a couple of weeks uh, that is, is unlike anything the sports industry has seen before. And there's a little sneak preview on our website in the news section about it. It's called Be Energized. And can they also, can they find you on Twitter or Facebook? They can. They can follow us on Twitter, at CreationSupps. Um, and on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash creation supplements LLC. 
We're also on Instagram, same as Twitter, at Creation Subs, and we're very, very active on all three of those, um, and always love hear for, hearing from our fans, and get back to people uh, as soon as we can on, on each of those social media outlets. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time, my friend. Thank you very much. All right. Good stuff. I'll let you know how that goes. Yeah, thank you. Nice, Brian.